Humans aren't the only species to suffer from mental maladies. Although schizophrenia appears to be unique to mankind, perhaps as a social construction, non-human animals exhibit plenty of other psychiatric conditions. And why shouldn't they? They all suffer to some extent from the consequences of human activity, and many face genocide daily. But what you might find surprising is the sheer variety of disorders that affect them, as well as the consistency of symptoms manifesting in similar ways between even animals of different species. As mental health advocates are keen to point out, you are not alone. And as this list goes to show, that applies to other species as well. Number 10. Depression it's hardly surprising that animals can suffer from depression or that humans are generally to blame. Causes include unsolvable problems. For example, non-specific scolding leaves pets confused about what they've done wrong, if anything at all, and inability to escape abuse, i.e. learned helplessness, and insufficient access to food or opportunities for natural behavior, for example, hunting, mating, and socializing. Caged hens get depressed, for instance, when they're unable to get out and forage. There are telltale signs in most species, but some are more obvious than others. Arturo, the world's saddest polar bear, died in captivity in 2016, having spent his final years pacing up and down. He was also seen rocking from side to side and displaying his teeth as a sign of discomfort. Although his symptoms were blamed on old age by the zoo, his living conditions can't have helped much, what with the Argentinian summer temperature frequently exceeding 86 degrees Fahrenheit. His despondency may also have had something to do with the death of his longtime companion, Pelusa, in 2012. Towards the end of his life, Arturo completely lost interest in eating and began to shed some of his weight. Not only are the symptoms of depression shared between animals and humans, but the treatments can be similar too. Pet antidepressants are apparently more common than ever, and they're reportedly effective as well. As with humans, though, it's better to limit their use, perhaps combining a short course of meds with targeted behavioral therapy. Of course, improving living conditions, accommodating natural behaviors, and giving adequate care and attention should prevent the onset of depression in the first place. Number 9. Anxiety Anxiety disorders in humans hijack the fight-or-flight instinct, a survival mechanism evolved to rapidly respond to threats. So, like depression, it isn't that surprising to find animals suffering from them too. To be clear, we're not talking about the fear responses of animals filing through the slaughterhouse, or cowering from fireworks or thunderstorms, all of which are relatively sane and understandable. We're talking about chronic disorders or anxiety that persists in the absence of rational cues. Cats and dogs are often diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, GAD, which may present itself in panting, pacing, trembling, holding the ears back, holding the mouth in a submissive grin, hiding, or simply staying still. The condition can be treated with SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor medications like fluoxetine, Prozac, or anti-anxiety medications like diazepam, Valium, or better yet, with behavioral conditioning and care. Horses are also prone to anxiety, which may cause them to bolt off or grind their teeth. As in humans, causes are varied. They may include confusion, i.e. not knowing where they are, why, or what they have to do, vision problems, which may cause confusion, pain, discomfort, an ill-fitting saddle, poor diet, insufficient exercise, past trauma, and even the anxiety of their handler. Genetics may also play a part, as some breeds, for example thoroughbred and Arabian, are apparently more prone than others. Weaning is another recognized cause, but horses get separation anxiety in general. They hate to be away from their herd, or the few companions that pass for one, and will often pick up vices in seclusion, such as chewing on wood, kicking down doors, fidgeting, pacing, and a behavior known as cribbing, whereby lonely horses set their teeth into a fixed object, arch their neck, and pull backwards, sucking in air to cause an addictive release of endorphins. Separation anxiety in horses also leads to, and is aggrieved by, poor sleep quality. Without their companions, it seems they're unable to fully relax, becoming exhausted, agitated, and more prone to full-blown panic. Unfortunately, it's often the more prone horses that get isolated or mistreated as a result, which only makes their anxiety worse. It's better to learn how to understand and appropriately respond to horses' needs, or to become a bit of a horse whisperer, in other words, and buck the trend of equine abuse. Number 8. Addiction Addiction in animals is such a reliable psychological or neurological condition that it allows us to model addiction in humans. Animal studies have, for example, shown that the action of a drug is often sufficient to produce addiction on its own without any need for an underlying pathology. A chemical normally released during sex or feeding, behaviors that promote our survival, functions as a powerful reward mechanism, causing the brain to crave more of whatever gave rise to its release, be it food, sex, or drugs. In other words, addiction can happen just as reliably with candy as it can with crack cocaine, and just as reliably in humans 
as it does in non-humans. But it's far more shocking to see animals addicted to drugs that are more or less normalized among humans. For instance, images of an orangutan smoking a cigarette caused outrage earlier this year and drew criticism of Indonesian zoos. The cigarette had been flicked into the great ape's enclosure by a visitor, perhaps at the animal's own request. Some have been smoking for years, mimicking human behavior by holding cigarettes between their index and middle fingers. And when they want to smoke, all they have to do is make this gesture to the crowd and a visitor will toss a lit cigarette their way, if only for the entertainment value. If they don't get one, they may start to become angry and start throwing things, and they won't even be distracted with food. The solution, other than removing the animals from the visitors, appears to be going cold turkey. Number 7. ADHD Many of us have experienced hyperactivity in dogs, and it's usually the result of their breed or training. Only rarely can it be diagnosed as ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, but it does happen. There's actually no reason why animals shouldn't get ADHD. Even fruit flies' brains are similar enough to our own to develop the condition. Although they only have 250,000 neurons compared to our 86 billion, they're evidently capable of emotion-like behaviors based on dopamine and serotonin activity. Neurotransmitters involved in mood, memory, and most psychiatric disorders. Fruit flies have long been studied for insights into human learning, but they could also help us model more complex disorders like ADHD. In one experiment, fruit flies in a test chamber were subjected to a rapid succession of brief but brisk air puffs. This caused them to run around in a frantic manner for several minutes, even after the air puffs had stopped. Once they calmed down, all it took was a single puff of air for them to repeat the frantic behavior. While this might seem perfectly normal for flies, their hyperactivity was actually attributed to a genetic mutation that eliminated dopamine receptors from their neurons. In other words, their behavior was caused by an absence of dopamine activity. Non-mutant flies were more relaxed. And this supports what we know about humans with the condition, who often take dopamine reuptake inhibitors, drugs to increase dopamine levels in the brain, such as Ritalin. Also, just like human ADHD patients, mutant fruit flies given cocaine were actually less hyperactive as a result. Earlier studies also showed that they had difficulty learning new information. The mutation prevented them from associating particular odors with negative outcomes, electric shocks. This suggests that it's not the hyperactivity itself that causes attention deficit in humans, as commonly believed, but that both are independent symptoms of the same underlying cause. Number 6. PTSD there are more than 2,000 military working dogs, MWDs, not to be confused with WMDs, employed by the Department of Defense. They're preferred over machines, apparently, because dogs have a heart, and in their zeal to please their handlers, they'll go looking for things without having to be asked. The job involves sniffing out explosives and drugs, tracking armed enemies, and clearing buildings of insurgents. It's messy, dangerous, and extremely traumatic work. So it should come as no surprise that 5-10% to of military working dogs have shown signs of PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder. When she was deployed in Iraq back in 2008 to 2009, two-year-old German Shepherd Gina was playful and totally healthy. Six months later, she was so jittery and panicked by war that she had to be retired from duty. Although canine PTSD has been known about since the 1980s, it wasn't until 2010 that it was officially recognized by the military. Nowadays, they actually bring dogs home and try to recondition them before abandoning them as someone else's problem. Fortunately, a number of non-profit organizations have stepped up to rehabilitate MWDs with PTSD. But civilian dogs, they can get it too. Following traumatic injuries or events, any dog can show signs of lingering stress, including hypervigilance, aggression, clinginess, insomnia, and even panic attacks. They also tend to be extremely evasive of anything associated with the trauma. One dog shot by an African-American police officer, for example, developed a phobia of black men, police officers, or anyone in uniform. He also feared police cars, flashing lights, and sirens. Conventional pharmaceuticals may be used in the short term, but in-depth therapy is obviously a better solution. Interestingly, medical marijuana also appears to help, just as it does for humans. Number 5. OCD Orcas, or killer whales, exhibit some very strange behaviors in captivity. At SeaWorld, they get so bored that they compulsively regurgitate their food just to play with it, eat it, and puke it up again. It's a chronic problem for many captive killer whales, and it's apparently contagious too, eventually spreading to other orcas who seemed to be avoiding the habit. It's certainly not a natural behavior, and it's actually pretty dangerous to their health, eroding the teeth, damaging the esophagus, and leading to weight loss and malnutrition. Obsessive headbanging is another damaging compulsion, and it's a far greater threat to their welfare. Repeatedly smacking their own heads against the walls or floors of their tanks, they've been known to self-inflict sometimes serious bruises and even bloodshed. One young calf at SeaWorld San Antonio caused so much damage that she couldn't open her jaws to eat, yet she still went on banging her head. 
Others become obsessed with picking at the paint in their tanks, compulsively rubbing it away, even as it lacerates their face. Some of these behaviors might seem like attempts to escape, but while obsessive compulsions like these are no doubt influenced by captivity, they're not unheard of in the wild. At least one ocean-dwelling orca has been observed slapping its tail a hundred times in succession, an unusual behavior in killer whales and one strangely akin to OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder in humans. Cats can also show signs of OCD. When they find certain behaviors bring relief from pain or stress, for example, they may continue to pursue them even when the trigger is absent. Repetitive meowing, pacing, chewing, suckling, and of course excessive self-grooming tend to be signs of other, more easily treatable conditions. However, once these have been ruled out or treated, you may well be looking at a cat with OCD. Treatment might include eliminating stress, increasing predictability of routine, i.e. feeding, play, exercise, socializing, and giving them more time outdoors. Number 4. Anorexia The causes of eating disorders in humans are complicated and highly personal, but generally speaking, sufferers tend to be influenced by socio-cultural ideals or what they've been led to believe looks good to other humans. Interestingly, pigs can develop eating disorders for much the same reason, in order to look good for humans, albeit on the supermarket shelf. Increased demand for low-fat meat puts pressure on farmers to breed leaner pigs than usual, the process of eugenic tinkering that appears to have favored genetic traits associated with other extremes including susceptibility to stress. As a result, some pigs, mainly sows, are suffering from what in humans we'd diagnose as anorexia nervosa, but in pigs it's known as thin sow syndrome. They don't eat enough to maintain their body weight, they're hyperactive, and they don't go on heat. Having to compete with other pigs for food, and especially having to deal with bullies, only exacerbates their undereating. Like human anorexics, thin sows respond well to drugs that promote serotonin, a chemical involved in mood, appetite, and social behavior. Making their lives more more comfortable with warm, dry pens and soft bedding also alleviate symptoms. The condition is so similar to anorexia, in fact, that researchers look to thin cell syndrome when developing new treatments for humans. Number 3. Self-harm Trichotillomania, the compulsive pulling of hair, is a form of self-harm in humans related to OCD. But it has also been observed in other species, including captive birds. Parrot macaws and cockatoos, for example, are known to pluck out their own feathers, causing a loss of insulation and blood, and an increasing susceptibility to disease. It's commonly associated with isolation and boredom, but overcrowding, unpredictable routines, and other stresses have also been known to cause it. Providing different toys each week is one way to discourage the habit, as is ensuring that lonely birds get plenty of attention. They also benefit from better nutrition, sleep, and in some cases, serotonin-promoting medications. Rhesus monkeys have also been known to self-harm, biting, slapping, or excessively rubbing themselves to the point of inflicting wounds. Haloperidol, an antipsychotic drug commonly given to humans with behavioral problems like Tourette's or schizophrenia, has apparently been proven to be effective, but as with birds, self-harm in rhesus monkeys has been linked to the stresses of captivity. Adequate care and attention to their needs are therefore much better solutions, just as they are for humans. Number 2. Suicide if animals are driven by an overriding instinct for self-preservation, and if they lack any conscious awareness of mortality, then suicide, the visualization and enactment of their own deaths, must be literally unthinkable for them. Of course, though, there are many examples of animals causing their own deaths. Dogs rejecting food, aphids blowing themselves up, ducks reportedly drowning on purpose, mother spiders allowing their young to eat them, sheep running off cliffs, bears committing murder-suicide to escape torture, and so on. But what tends to be missing from all such cases is definitive evidence of intent. We don't know whether these animals wanted to die or whether their behavior inadvertently killed them. In most cases, as suicide requires some degree of abstract thinking, it seems reasonable to assume the latter. However, looking to some of the more intelligent species, animals capable of both self-recognition and apparently an awareness of death, it becomes much harder to dismiss instances of suicide as unintentional, no matter how rare they might be. Speaking in A Whale of a Business, Frontline 1997, dolphin trainer Richard O'Barry says that he has witnessed the intentional suicide of a dolphin. This dolphin was severely depressed from captivity and mistreatment. Indeed, she spent most of her time floating motionless on the surface of her tank. Eventually, her body blackened with sunburn and her dorsal fin drooped to one side. On her final day, O'Barry said, She swam over and looked me right in the eye, took a breath, and just held, you know, she committed suicide. The tank, the tank is a bad thing. 
Human cruelty also takes its toll on captive elephants, especially when they're subject to torture. Some have been known to throw themselves off cliffs, while others simply stand on their own trunks, refusing to move until they ultimately suffocate and die. Number 1. Autism Lacking verbal language and specializing in single-minded skills, most non-human animals appear to qualify as autistic savants. Cats, for example, are intensely focused at times. They also tend to enjoy their own company and may be hyper or hyposensitive to touch. But for the most part, they're not actually autistic. Most animals are highly sociable in their own way with sophisticated systems of communication and a visceral need for companionship. A few, however, may well be on the spectrum. Repetitive spinning, i.e. chasing their own tail, extreme phobias, staring blankly into space, and social avoidance or withdrawal have all been observed in bull terriers. And it doesn't just resemble autism. Supposedly, autistic dogs actually share key biomarkers with autistic children, namely higher levels of neurotensin and corticotropin-releasing hormone. Curiously, bull terriers even look autistic, exhibiting some of the same physical characteristics – long face, large ears, prominent forehead, and high-arched palate – as humans with Fragile X syndrome, or FSX. This is a condition that is closely related to autism. Autism in animals may teach us new ways of dealing with it in humans. As the animal behaviorist and autistic Temple Grandin suggests, it may even force us to reconsider whether autism is a disorder at all. As she sees it, autism is simply a different way of looking at the world and can therefore be viewed as a kind of way station on the road from animals to humans. In any case, understanding is key here. Learn their triggers, for example, strangers, noise, etc., and try to keep them to a minimum. Failing that, training autism autistic pets to pull a loaded wagon or wear wraps that apply reassuring pressure to the body, similar to a weighted comfort blanket, may help alleviate distress. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Do not forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. If you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out my other channel called Today I Found Out. You'll find a link to that in the description below as well as on the screen now. And as always, thank you for watching.